Welcome to my station. This is Dr. Emmanuel. I want us to briefly look at what the PLAB2 entails, okay? And uh, by so doing, we'll just be looking at one case scenario and how we can approach it. And as we go along, uh, we might just give a few tips on what we need to know as regards the PLAB2 examination and how to approach it, okay? So I'm, I'm one of the GP trainees in the NHS. So having had the NHS experience, I can um, you know, give a few valuable tips that would help someone who has trained outside the United Kingdom understand you know, one or two things about how the NHS works, especially with regards to you know, referral um, and treatment protocols. So let's just use this question as a guide. You are the foundation year two doctor in the GP surgery. Mrs. Joyce, who is aged 55 years, has come to the clinic for health checkup. All the bloods are normal. Only cholesterol was found to be high and her curie score is 14%. She should be on statins. Please talk to the patient, discuss your initial plan of management with her and address her concerns. So this, she should be on starting seems a bit equivocal. Um, she should be on statins. I understand it as you have to, you know, counsel her to start statins, not that she's already on statins and has come for a follow-up. So, so let's go on. Um, so looking at this question, this lady is Mrs. Joyce. She's 55 years old and she's come to you at, at the GP surgery. So you are her GP for your the foundation year two doing your GP placement. And this lady had some blood tests requested in her previous, you know, previous uh, visits. And the results have come back. You've reviewed her results. Most of them are normal, but her cholesterol level is high and you've calculated her cure risk um, and it's 14%. So in the GP surgery, uh, like where I did my, you know, my ST1 GP placements, we use the system called system one. And with that system, we have a Q risk calculator. So you just use the computer. You don't need to memorize how to calculate a Q risk. You use the computer, use the Q risk calculator on the computer, and it gives you the results. So that Q risk calculator has given you 14%. And you need to see this lady, tell her about her results, tell her about the fact that her cholesterol level is high and her, start, her Q risk is high. Tell her that she needs to be on the statin. See what she thinks. So your PLAB2 assessments, you are tested on three competencies. You're looking at three competencies. Number one is your consultation and communication skills. How well you discuss with this patient, how well you use, you know, you use, you know, fluently use of English, um, how well you're able to check patients' ideas, patients' concerns, patients' expectations from that consultation, how well you're able to carry patients along in terms of shared understanding and shared treatment plan, and how well you're able to communicate your management plan, do a safety net, if, 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 you, if you need to do a safety net, if you need to arrange a follow-up, if you need to arrange a referral, how well you communicate these to the patients. Second thing they're looking at is your data gathering, how thorough, and by thorough, I don't mean you, I don't mean you need to ask all the questions in the world, but how relevant are the history taking questions that you are asking? How relevant are the, invest are the examinations that you carry out? How relevant are the investigations that you're going to request or order? And then they're also going to assess your treatment management or treatment of uh, slash follow-up. What treatment or management plan do you discuss with this patient? And remember, Everything has to be a shared understanding, okay? And shared decision-making. So you are not just the one making decisions. Always have it in mind that this is this, whatever you say is the patient's body at the end of the day. And they have the final say to say, yes, I want to start a statin or no doctor. I'm sorry, I understand the benefits of statin, but I just don't want it. So they have the right to do that. So approach to the station. So while you are outside the station, 
So in PLAP2, um, you know, for those who haven't attempted the exam before, you will have 16 to 18 stations, if I'm right, yeah? I think 16 to 18 stations. Um, and each station, you will have eight minutes in each station. Um, so eight minutes is very short, to be honest, for you to, to, to say a lot. So you need to know how to maximize and manage your time um, and how to carry the patient along at the same time. You may not finish all your stations, but if you are hitting the nail on the head, you can still score high. You can still score 10, 11, 12 in those stations, even if you don't finish completely. But if you are having the right approach, your communication and consultation skills are, skills are top notch. Your data gathering is relevant. You're able to talk about management before the time, before the bell goes. You should be hitting 10, 11, 12 in your stations. It's very possible. I think personally, most people who haven't, most people who do the PLAB are people from coming from outside the UK, isn't it? And the major struggle we have is not understanding the NHS system. So we have we may, we may have the knowledge on what has to be done, but not understanding the NHS system may make it a bit um may make your, your approach a bit clumsy in terms of you might be managing this patient as though she was in a cardiology clinic. Meanwhile, she's in the GP surgery. So understanding how the system works will help you devise the right management. So questions you ask yourself when you're stood outside the station, before going into the station, while you're reading the question, you've read the question, what are the things you need to ask yourself? Where am I? What is the setting? So I'm in a GP surgery. So I'm not in a cardiology clinic. I'm not in A&E. So the things I'm going to do have to be tailored towards the GP surgery setting. Who has come to see me today? Mrs. Joyce, who is a 55 year old lady. Why has she come? She's come to discuss her blood results. This tells me that she's been here previously. Blood tests have blood tests were, you know, were sent to the lab. And now she's she's been she's been booked in today to come and have a chat with me to talk about her blood, her blood results. So she's coming to talk about blood results. I is there any result that's abnormal? Yes, her cholesterol level is high and her Q risk is high. Okay. I'll ask myself, what does Joy, Mrs. Joyce, understand about the blood tests? that were requested. So she came in the last time, what is her understanding? Obviously the doctor that saw her, if you were not the one, if, you, if it was your colleague who saw her, you know, would have told her the reasons why he or she wanted to request those investigations. So check with her, does she remember what's her understanding and why those blood tests were requested in the first place? Check what she understands by that or what she remembers from her last visit. Now you explain to her the results. So let's just start from the beginning. So you move in, you're like, hello, is that Mrs. Joyce? Let's assume her last name is White. Is that, is that Mrs. Joyce White? And she says, yes. And could you confirm your, your date of birth for me? You introduce yourself. I'm Dr. Emmanuel, I'm one of the doctors in this GP surgery today. Pleased to meet you. How would you like me to call you? Are you, are you gonna ask, is it okay if I call you Joyce? And she'll say, yeah, usually she'll say, oh, yes, call me Joyce. Or she might call a different name, call me better. Okay. And then you say, nice to meet you. I, I understand you're here today to talk about your blood results. Is that correct? Okay, because it's a, usually it's, it's a follow-up visit. So you, sh you shouldn't, it will sound very awkward if you ask her, why are you here today? Okay. So you should come from the point of understanding that you understand she's here for a follow-up. So I understand, I believe, or I believe you're here to talk about your blood results. Is that is that right or is that correct? And she will tell you yes. You say you say just to just to just to just to check, um don't be offended, just to check um what's your understanding on why this why this blood test were requested. Usually she will tell you, oh yeah I came I saw it last week or last maybe last two weeks or last four weeks I came in I saw your colleague and your colleague told me about this and decided, and we decided we needed to do some blood tests, maybe just for some, just some routine blood tests. So maybe I complained of having some mild chest pain and you decided we needed to do some blood tests. Whatever the reason was, she will tell you. And then you tell her, okay, thanks for letting me know. 
Now, I've had a look, I've had a look at your blood results. The good news is that most of your blood results are normal. So you start with the good news. Some people will tell you, oh yeah, you need to mention all the all the blood tests. You know, she probably she had full blood count, she had a HbA1c, she had kidney function tests, you, you know, you urine electrolytes, she had a liver function test, that you need to tell her all of them and explain what all those tests mean. Personally, I don't think you need to go into such detail, except if the patient asks. So you can say, okay, yes, we did a full blood count. We checked, we checked you know, your blood counts. Did your liver function, kidney function, um, you know, diabetes screening, which were all normal. So you don't need to start explaining what each test means. Usually the patients here are very enlightened. They have basic education. They have basic enlightenment. They understand when you tell them liver function tests, okay? When you mention the word kidney function test, they know what you mean. They understand most of them. So you put it that way. The good news is that most of your test results were normal. However, your cholesterol level was a, was a little bit high, higher than we expect. So you don't want to make her panic. You don't want to make her feel like the world is coming to an end or that her cholesterol level is you know, hitting the roof. You tell her it's, 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 it's a bit higher than we would expect. Your cholesterol level is a bit higher than we would expect. Okay? And... Um, now we've we've done we've you know we've put this cholesterol level and some other parameters like your age, you know, um, into you know into a calculator to calculate what we call your Q risk, okay? And then you explain what Q risk means. Or so you ask her, have you heard about Q risk before? And she will, she, she might tell you very likely in the exam she will tell you no she hasn't heard. Doctor, I've not heard about Q risk. I explain to what what Q risk. You tell her that Q risk is a is a score. Okay, it's a scoring system that we use to predict a person's risk of developing heart attack and stroke over the next 10 years. Okay, cardiovascular events. So heart attack and stroke. So the risk just tells us, it gives us a clue about your risk of developing heart attacks or strokes over the next 10 years. And that this calculation has given us a score of 14%. And that any Q risk that is above 10% is classified as a high Q risk. It used to be 20%, but it's now being it's now been dropped to 10%. So any cure is as greater than 10% is classified as high risk. Do you understand? Or are you are you with me? Do I need to repeat anything? Are you following? Okay, do you understand? Check. Are you following? Do you understand? She will tell you yes. She usually she'll say, So, doctor, what do we need to do? She will lead you. Okay, she will lead you on. So, doctor, what do we need to do? You see, what this means is that ideally, under ideal circumstances, we we'll advise you to start a medication called statins. Have you? Do you know what these medications are all about? She will tell you yes or no. If she tells you no, you say, okay, that these statins are medications that will help to reduce your cholesterol level. And this will help to reduce your risk of developing heart attacks or stroke in the next 10 years. And then she'll say, okay. She said, do you have any questions? She said, oh, yeah, doctor. Will I have any side effects or complications from taking these medications? If she doesn't, even if she doesn't ask you, you have to tell her, okay? She said that this medication has benefits, but I also need to mention a few complications or side effects that you may, that you may experience. Things like nausea. It might make you feel nauseous or make you feel sick. It might make you have loose tools, you know? Sometimes it could also make you constipated. Most patients understand what constipation means. It's not a big word. Okay, it's not a medical jargon. They know what diarrhea means. They know what constipation means. They know what nausea or sickness. You can call it sickness. It makes you feel sick. And it might make you become sick. So feeling sick means nausea. Being sick or becoming sick means vomiting. So you mention things like that. You say, okay, that there are also some complications, possible, possible complications, which are not very common, but we need to let you know just in case you, know, you notice some of the warning signs. That it might affect your muscles, it might make you feel, you know, give you muscle ache, muscle weakness. Um, if you notice this, you will need to let us know. So we might you know, have to bring you in, examine you, and we might request some blood tests, which is, you know, creating kindness. It's okay, very uncommonly also, these statins could affect the liver and cause inflammation of the liver, okay? So you won't tell her hepatitis, you can say it can cause inflammation. Inflammation is a common word in the UK, okay? 
can cause may cause inflammation of the liver, but this is not common. Okay, and this is not common. So if you notice you're becoming unduly tired, if you notice your eyes or your skin are becoming yellow, okay, if you're losing appetite, you need to let us know. You might need to do some blood tests to make sure everything is normal. And then you ask her again, do you understand? Does this sound like something you would like to start? Okay, does it sound like you would be happy to start these medication? And then another thing that is important is the examiner needs to see the, you explaining to the patient, but not trying to force the patient to make a decision at that spot. So you, you tell the patient, I understand if you you might not you know you might not feel comfortable um, making up your mind today. You can have a leaflet. We can give you a leaflet on statin and curious. You can go home, read more about it, and they will book you. We can book you another appointment in two weeks' time or in a week's time to have a discussion. And then you can let us know what you, if you have any concerns and what your decisions are. So explain everything, but don't put the patient on the spot to make a decision. I mean, it's not, it's not like... If you don't start her on statins today, she doesn't mean she's going to die, isn't it? So you also need to explain a few things um, as regards statins. You have to explain that, okay, yeah, she's had, ideally you need to do some blood tests before you can start statins, but they've told you that she had blood tests. Those blood tests were normal. So you need to do kidney function tests um, and thyroid function tests, that's uh, the TSH, just the thyroid stimulating hormone. Usually, that's what is done first in the UK. Okay, usually we just do TSH first. We don't do T3, T3, and T4. We just do TSH. If TSH is abnormal, then we proceed to do 3T4, T3, T3, and T4. So you do a TSH, you do kidney function, we do liver function, which is which I assume she's done because they've told you that other tests are normal. So it's okay, other tests are normal, your liver function is fine, so we can start this medication, okay? If she's not having, if she's not having um, any, so you, another thing you need to check, you need to check, ask her if she has any other, any medical history, um, any past medical history, if she's on any medications, because in the UK, before you prescribe any medication, you need to check for interactions, so usually sometimes the BNF might be, the BNF is in every station in the, in, in, in the PLAB too. So you need to check for interactions because it's a criminal offense if you prescribe medications and a patient develops severe or life-threatening interactions, okay? It's a very big problem. You could lose your license for that. So, so you ask her, if she has any past medical history, what medications she's taking, if she's taking any medications. And you tell her, okay, yes, I just need to look at this BNF um, just to make sure there are no interactions, you know, between the statin and the medications you are having. You print out leaflets for her. Tell her statins are usually taken at night. Then she has to let you know if she develops any side effects, Okay. And throughout your consultation, you need to be checking if she has any concerns. You explain things to her. You say, does this sound like something you would like to do? Okay, have you got any concerns? Have you got any questions? Okay. You need to be sure she is happy with the plan. You need to make sure it's not just you who is giving out the plan. You need to make sure she's also thinking and she's accepting the plan. And then what follow-up? So you need to be also be thinking of safety nets. So in terms of safety nets, means what are those warnings I need to give her? Subtle warnings. You don't need to make her scared. We need to tell her if you develop, you know, muscle weakness, especially severe muscle weakness. Um, if you start having, you know, uncontrollable diarrhea, you start having you notice yellowness of your eyes or skin, you know, severe tiredness. You need to let us know. Okay, we might need to book you another appointment just to review and make sure you're not having complications from these medications. So based on the BNF, these are some of the side effects. Tummy upset, nausea, diarrhea, constipation, vomiting, headaches. Okay, myalgia, muscle pain. And myalgia is common, but if, if the muscle pain becomes severe, then you'll be thinking of... Um, 
rhabdomyolysis. So rhabdomyolysis, you know, um, so hepatitis, which you've, <clears throat> which you use the word inflammation, inflammation of the liver, it can cause inflammation of the pancreas, and it can cause sexual dysfunction because sexual dysfunction is a severe complication, which not, not every patient will mention to you. So you need to check in your follow-up. So after starting this medication, you need to do follow-up visits. So if she, if, she, if she agrees, if Mrs. Um, if Mrs. Joyce agrees to start this medication, then you will need to do a follow-up visit. So in three months' time, you will need to repeat her liver function test. And in 12 months' time, you also need to repeat her liver function test after starting it. So you can tell her, yes, we'll start this medication. You can pick it up at the pharmacy. Uh, we'll arrange an appointment in three months just to check follow-up and make sure you're not having any side effects and also to, you know, to do some of your blood tests to make sure they are still normal. Does that sound okay? Are you happy with the plan? Thank you. And are you, you know, so carry her along, make sure. Are you happy with the plan? Does it sound reasonable? Is it something you're happy to do? Lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Okay. So you need to be in control. The patient also needs to be in control. Both of you need to be seen. The, the examiner needs to see that rapport. The examiner needs to see that, okay, yes, this is a confident doctor. And this is also a doctor who is empathetic, who is giving the patient time to talk, listening to the patient, making sure the patient is happy, making sure the patient understands what he is saying. Okay? So remember, the three competencies that have been assessed, your consultation skills, communication skills, things like, you know, how you introduce yourself, how you see it, you can have sometimes you hear things like body mirroring. If you're someone, if you're if you're if you're able to cross your legs, the patient is crossing their legs, you might want to mirror them. It's not a must, but you might want to cross your legs just to mirror their body. You know, you might need to, you might want to um, you know, um give them a few seconds to express themselves. It's called the golden minute, but in this exam, you might just call it the golden moment after introducing yourself. You might need to give them a few seconds for them to talk and express themselves. This is a follow-up visit, so it might not be appropriate. Giving the golden minutes is more appropriate when you're seeing the patient for the first time. Okay, why have you come today? Chest pain. Could you tell me about this? Let them talk. Okay, but this is a follow-up visit. Patient had a blood test, so it might not really, you know, come into this particular scenario. We'll do some other scenarios in other videos where we'll apply the golden minutes or we'll call the golden moments. It can be 30 seconds, it could just be 20 seconds, you know, 20 seconds, 15 seconds. Give them a short time, you know, um, to talk. Your data gathering and interpretation, history taking, you need to examine, you may need to examine. In this situation, you may not need to examine. If she doesn't really have, you know, anything, or you might just do a physical examination, but it may not be necessary in this kind of situation. Interpretation, data interpretation, already you're able to tell her most of your results are fine, but cholesterol is slightly high and you have a curious that's above 10%. I explain what curious means. Management, you've told her ideally you would advise statins. You've explained to her the benefits of statins to reduce the cholesterol and reduce her risk of having stroke and heart attack over the next 10 years. And you've gone further to explain side effects, which are very important side effects, complications of statins. And then you've arranged follow-up. You've done a safety net and follow-up. If you develop severe nausea, severe vomiting, you know, if you feel very unwell, very tired, muscle pains everywhere, if you notice illness of your eyes, let us kindly let us know. We need to reassess you and make sure things are still the way we expect them to be. And then follow-up, if you arrange a blood test and maybe telephone consultation to check on her, you know how she's doing. Okay, you might not need to bring her in. You might give her a phone call. Five minutes phone call. How are you? You started your starting uh, three months ago. How are you finding it? Have you noticed any side effects? Anything that's, you know, anything untoward that you want to mention? Well, fine. We'll arrange a blood test for you. You can come into the GP surgery. Or you can go to the hospital, the phlebotomy to take your blood and we'll review the results and we'll let you know. So these are things you need to do, okay, to tick all your competencies. And then you thank the patient, you thank the examiner, and you wait for the bell. The bell has not already gone. So if you think this video has been helpful or useful, kindly like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share with your friends who will benefit from this. 
Thank you very much.